each one of us breathes in the equivalent of 14 kilograms of air every day, but we only drink 2 kilograms of water and eat 1.5 kilograms of food. With every lungful, we inhale vital oxygen, but also small amounts of potentially harmful elements. In fact, the International Agency for Research on Cancer says that outdoor air pollution can be carcinogenic. And like clouds moving through the sky, pollution is transported from one place to another by winds. Every day here at the European Weather Center at Reading in the UK, scientists forecast not only the weather, but also the movement of air pollution, both across Europe and worldwide. Two technical support staff are on site 24 hours a day. This work is part of the European project MAC2, monitoring atmospheric composition and climate. Every day we receive millions of observations here in this room. Um, observations from satellites flying about 800 kilometers above the Earth, looking at the atmosphere. We also receive observations from the surface, um, like measurement stations all over the world, ships, airplanes, etc. The most common pollutants are constantly monitored. Carbon monoxide, ozone, nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. How do we get a forecast from this data? The data are elaborated on the supercomputers using sophisticated algorithms that mimic the law of physics. The forecast for yesterday is then compared with the observations of today to produce the forecast for tomorrow. All the data is then stored in this massive computer. To give an idea of scale, if all this data were printed, there would be enough books to reach the moon ten times over. So who uses this data? You can think of citizens who are sensitive to um, high levels of pollution, like people with asthma, who need to know what the conditions will be for the next few days. There are authorities in cities or regions that need to change, for instance, traffic control based on air quality measurements, but can use our forecast to anticipate the situation. There are authorities in regions or countries who want to be aware of the transboundary transport of pollutants so they can adjust their measures based on that information. The state agency for nature and environment, North Rhine-Westphalia in Essen, Germany, uses pollution forecasts produced by MAC2. They then add local information. Here in Duisburg, monitoring and forecasting air pollution is vital. This area produces a third of Germany's electricity using coal and is the world's second largest steel production site. In the middle of this major industrial area, an air monitoring station gathers data on air pollution. It measures pollution particles and nitrogen dioxide levels, giving an essential picture of air quality. Forecasts can then be made so people not only know what the situation is today, but what they can expect to be coming their way tomorrow too. All that so that little girls like this one can breathe freely. <laughs>